So as always, in any of this channel's two-part Glam and Gore tutorials, there's a lot of steps to get through. But this mermaid is pushing two and a half parts with the bioluminescent factor, so let's jump right into the start of it all with our Glam Mermaid. Start out naked. Your face. Guys, your face. We're not that kind of mermaid. I already painted my nails with the NYX Precious Pearls White Pearl Polish, which if you know me at all, you know this is a rare event. And then I got right to the face, beginning with the NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer. Using the Stay Matte But Not Flat Foundation in the shade Nude, I'm applying that all over my face with a large, dense brush. Set that with NYX's Color Correcting Banana Powder. Then I'm using a Milk Jumbo Pencil to mark out the placement of my makeup and to act as a brightening base for the colors. I'll be putting the colors all over my eyes, blonde brows, and some common contour spots to complement the facial features, but you can place yours wherever you see fit or try them out with dark defined brows. Blend. Next, I'm essentially using the Macaron Lippy in Orange Blossom as a cream paint to start filling up this avant-garde mermaid look with some easy to blend color. Go right over the edges of your white base, avoiding the eyelid for now. I also added in the hollows of the cheeks and in the cupid's bow area. Taking the Citron Macaron Lippy, I'm placing that right beside everywhere we put the orange. This will give us an easier and prettier transition when blending it out, which is the next step using a brush or a sponge. Much like setting normal foundations or cream contour colors with a powder, that is exactly what we're going to do now with our colors. I'm using the NYX Hot Orange Shadow to define, blend, and set all of our orange areas. I also placed it in the outer half of my eyelid, dragging it out like a wing to create the illusion of width in the eyes. Pull that down to the outer half of the lower lash line as well and blend everything out. I'm using the hot yellow shadow to set all of our yellow areas, again to transition out of the orange. Feel free to go back in with the orange blossom lippy to smooth out the gradient if needed. Then using the Cucumber Jumbo Pencil, I'm adding a pop of green to the center of the lid and the inner half of the lower lash line to break up all the warm we got going on. I mixed the Key Lime Macaron Lippy on top of that to get the exact green that I wanted, always blending as you go and adding back in any lost color when you need to. I applied NYX's Perfect Pear Color Mascara to my lashes and filled in the lips with the Intense Butter Gloss and Sorbet. I used the Liquid Crystal Liner in Crystal Silver to add small glitter accents near the inner and outer corners of the eye, and the Ritualistic Illuminator in all the highlight areas like the cheekbone, center of the nose, and Cupid's bow. Then I thought I was done here until my lash addiction wanted to be fed, so I gave in and I grabbed the NYX Wicked Lashes in Tease. I glued them on and then applied the Perfect Pear Color Mascara to them. Don't forget to coat the tops of the lashes too so even when you're looking down, you're looking fancy. And now, our pre-toxic, pre-cray-cray, mermay, may, is done. It's gore time, shall we? Big FX looks benefit a lot from prep work because it's easier to take your time with fabricating the pieces, see it off of your face, and cut down sometimes hours in the application process so you don't get overly fatigued. This time, our prep work requires the use of FX gelatin. A full tutorial on how to make this super awesome, inexpensive, easy to find mix of stuff can be found in my how to make a fake heart video, but here's a crash course. Mix a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 1.5 parts of gelatin, glycerin, and water respectively and mix it into a microwavable container. You can pre-color yours by mixing small amounts of cream makeup products, water-based products, or even crushed eyeshadows into your concoction. Then you want to heat that all up for 15 seconds at a time, mixing in between until it's fully melted like so but watch yourself, this will be extremely hot. Then I'm using these syringes to suck up a bunch of hot gelatin and squirt small drops of it back onto a flat surface. It's kind of like being a pastry chef, kind of. Throw out any drops that end up being conjoined twins or deformed mutants. Do that until you have approximately a million circles of cooled gelatin. Seriously though, you'll need a lot more of these than you think you do. I made some with clear gelatin and some with green. I also made significantly bigger drops for what will later be the neck piece. Speaking of the neck piece, here's how you make it. Start by laying down a thin layer of hot gelatin on your work surface. This will basically act as our base and our glue at the same time. While it's still hot, start laying down a row of your cool gelatin circles that is as wide as you need to wrap around the front of your neck. Lay more hot gelatin down as you go and start staggering more circles offset in a second row halfway on top of the first row. 
and so on and so on for several rows until it's as tall as you need to cover the front of your neck. I mixed some clear circles in at the top to give it a subtle gradient. After a few minutes, the base layer of gelatin should be cooled and you can peel it right off of your workspace. I used a NYX Black Bean Jumbo Pencil on a tiny brush to pre-paint the underside of each scale, helping them stand out from one another, give them more depth, and look a little more biohazard decay-esque. Repeat all of this to make the headpiece, cheek pieces, or whatever else you want to cover in scales. The only difference between here and the neck is that I'm sticking a little bit of FX adhesive down where I know the scales are going to overlap for a little extra hold since these are smaller and harder to keep together than the big pieces. Here I'm working on a life cast of my face, but you can certainly do this on a flat surface just like we did for the neck. If you happen to have one, it's helpful so you can see it all spatially together, but it's definitely not necessary. I pre-painted all of that the same as the neck using the black bean jumbo pencil. And then I also made these two little extra pieces that I figured I'd want to use somewhere once I started to piece it all together on my face. Could be for scaly sideburns, could be for a scaly beard, could be for a scaly mustache. The world is your oyster. Last for the prep work, an easy way to make the chest gills is to pour a small amount of hot gelatin onto anything with a bit of a rim, in this case, this plate. Move it back and forth slowly so that it covers a wider area and will leave you with slightly tapered edges, and then hold it at an angle until it dries. Sounds weird, but when they're cooled, they peel off like this and you can layer them next to each other to form the perfect set of gills. On to the application. These are my natural soulless ginger eyes you're seeing for the first time here. Sweet, it fits! I use the NYX Cottage Cheese Jumbo Pencil to mark around the entire edge of the head prosthetic. Do this for the cheek pieces, neck piece, and your scaly sideburn pieces. Marking this out is especially important for the bioluminescent part. Hmm, kinda looks like New Jersey. Using the hot black shadow, I'm filling in all the areas of skin and some hair even that is behind my outlines. This will mostly be under the wig, but this step helps to bring the whole look together. I'm doing this before I put the scale pieces on because it will be much harder to get to the exact edge after it's been applied. Then I need to bring it down a notch. Two notches. So that I can show you how my hair is quite literally full of secrets for this one. So the trick to bioluminescent mermaid? Fiber optic lights. I have been wanting to use fiber optics to do a lighted makeup look for months now, but I didn't have a look that really made sense with them until the mermaid theme was announced. And I immediately knew I wanted to use them to do a mermaid with a bioluminescent aspect like some deep sea fish, mutant. And then it was just about finding out how to make that work. So here's how you do it. These are little fiber optic light hair clips that I got off the wonderful internet and now they're going under our makeup but first we need to anchor them to our heads. I used the GHD paddle brush to section out my wild hair and tease it so that the clips would have a better hold. I sprayed the teased section with Fredkin's Control Attic 28 hairspray so that it wasn't going nowhere, preferably spraying away from the camera lens. Smooth it out, clip it on, let there be light. I clipped another fiber optic light set right under the first one because I wanted the headpiece to glow the most and I also wanted to vary it with one set that changed color at a slower speed. Then you're pretty much going to pretend you're cutting yourself bangs until all the fiber optics sit within your outline. Make sure you cut them while the lights are off and even though these are very low wattage lights, always use precaution and your own discretion when doing something like this because it is still electricity. If you feel any heat, if anything at all seems wrong, at any point, turn them off and take them off. That concludes this safety PSA. To stick these down, I use the same FX adhesive that we use on our scaly pieces. Lay it down all inside of the outline and wait for most of it to turn clear so that you know it's tacky and ready. Then simply push down the fiber optics, spacing them apart from each other as you work. Before I move on, I'm taking NYX's dank eyeshadow to blend out the area alongside the inner edge of the outline. Again, just to make sure that we can get it right up to the scale pieces. Then it's time to glue the headpiece on. Applying FX adhesive to the back of the piece, wait for it to turn mostly clear, Place it on and gently press down all over to make sure it's making contact with your skin, not just the fiber optics. Oh yeah! Repeat the fiber optic and glue process for each scale piece. Tease the hair, place the clip, cut to fit, glue them down, glue the scale piece, place it on. The neck is a little tricky, but the best place to put those clips is on the bottom most corners of your hair. 
Make sure you have some room to move your neck with the fiber optics glued down. And if you have a little slack, don't worry, it's gonna be covered by the hair anyway. If you've managed to do all this, applying the gills is really simple. Just mark where you want them, apply glue to the back of the prosthetic, just like you did for the scale pieces, and stick it on when it's tacky. Place the second one slightly over top of the edge of the first one, and voila, you can now breathe underwater. Kind of, not really. To incorporate all of these prosthetics into our face and the biohazard toxic theme, I'm using Dank again to blend slightly onto the edge of the scales and in towards the center of the face. Anything I do from here on out, as far as adding color goes, I will be doing to my neck and chest area as well. Transition out that green with NYX's Psychedelic Shadow. I'm doing it more haphazardly for this than the Glam Mermaid because we don't really want Toxic Mermaid looking too finessed. Quickly, I stopped working on the face to color these mermaidy ears made out of latex using the Psychedelic and Dank Shadow and then I lightly glued them on. Taking NYX's Born to Glow Liquid Illuminator in Sunbeam, I'm running this down the tops of all the scales to really make them pop under the light. See the difference? It's crazy. So crazy that I decided to use it for its intended use of highlighting normal facial areas too. Now, it's really difficult to get rid of some biohazard and radioactive waste, so it just didn't seem fitting to do this look without inserting the makeup product that is the hardest to get rid of. Glitter. Neon yellow glitter is the new green glitter, folks. Put that all over your scales. Put so much, you'll be full of regret tomorrow. We need to make these eyes menacing. I wanted to keep it simple by doing a massive, ginormous cat eye. I used NYX's Epic Black Mousse Liner on a tiny brush to wing it way over to the scales and way down at the center of the eye. I drug the inner corner over slightly to the lower lash line for now. I was having a hard time seeing at this point with my soulless ginger eyes, and I smudged the liner a bit, but life hack. You can use NYX's lip primer like a magic eraser by running it along the smudge. It works a lot like the Wonder Pencil, except it doesn't deposit a nude color on the off chance that your skin is currently green. Not the product's intention, but I'm pretty convinced all makeup has multiple uses. I used the Black Sesame Macaron Lippy as a base for my toxic mouth, and then messily dabbed hot black shadow all over eventually just swiping it all over the place, because girl, we're sick. Sick can't have perfectly lined lips. While I was at it, I used the black shadow to cover up some of the fiber optic lines and prosthetic edges that were still light by the hairline. Then my eyes just felt too normal for a toxic mutant mermaid, so I decided to channel the biohazard symbol by doing these creepy squiggles under my lower lash line. I did something similar coming off of the mouth, still using the epic black mousse liner. To brighten the outer corners of the eyes, I used the Cottage Cheese Jumbo Pencil again to run along the lower lash line, blending it out with a Q-tip. Then I'm taking the NYX, oh god, I don't know how to say this. I took Spanish in high school, not French. La Amuro Mascara. I'm coating the lashes to make them nice and black for our false lashes. These are called Malevolent, how appropriate. I still wanted there to be more grit and dirt, so I went in with hot black shadow on an angled brush and lined all the edges of the scales, dragging the color in randomly to give the effect that it's kind of spreading out from behind the scales. Hide all your secrets in a neon wig, or sea weave, as my friend Jay Kissa likes to call it. I'm adding green goo to the mouth, which is just the green version of a simple homemade blood recipe. And then lastly, popping in my fishy dentures to add green goo to those as well. And that's it. So the next time you kick a barrel of biohazard waste into the ocean, think twice. You might be turning Mermaid Mikey into Mutant Mermaid Mikey. And I will crawl out of the sea and haunt you like the giant nightlight that I am. This is my entry for the third round of the NYX Face Awards, and this round is the most important when it comes to you guys voting because it's the last round that is chosen solely by audience vote. The current top 12 will be cut in half, where only the top six with the most votes will get to compete live in Los Angeles at the big finale. I would be beyond ecstatic to be part of the top six, so if you think I've earned it, please take a minute each day to vote for me, Glam and Gore, at nickspaceawards.com. Three times a day, per person, per email, starting right now and every single day until July 31st. I'm so happy that I got to do Glam for the first challenge of Timeless Beauty, Gore for the second challenge of Paranormal Activity, and now, the heart of it, a two-part Glam and Gore look for the challenge of the mermaid theme. I hope if you're a new zombie, you've gotten to see what this channel is all about through each different round. But regardless, thank you guys so, so, so much for your insane amounts of love and support and zombie pride. Peace out, Trout. Who needs a club?
love when you got chased on the iPhone 6 flashlight. I might look scary, but do I sound scary? <laughs> I know that I'm pale, but I'm not usually this light. <laughs> <laughs> Very Maybe I have a future in stand up comedians. Com comedy. <laughs> How did you know I was here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no way. See ya. <laughs>